we're going to stay right here. Field now lining up behind the pace car. Frank Kimmel, Mason Mingus, Tom Hesser, Kyle Weatherman, and Mason Mitchell, your top five. Looks like Austin Wayne Self uh, will line up in sixth. Uh, I believe that is the uh, 69 car, Brad Lloyd, lining up in the seventh spot. And Milka Duno looks like she will line up in eighth. And I want to guess that uh, Kyle Benjamin will be ninth, last car on the lead lap as we get ready to go back green flag racing. He's still on pit road, though, as we're coming in the middle of turn three. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get off pit road and maintain speed before we take the green flag. He'll get back out onto the racetrack, but he will not be able to rejoin the tail of the field as we go to indeed get the green flag. Complete lap 71 here this afternoon. 129 to go here at the Winchester Speedway as the field now streams through turns one and two and down the back straightaway. And again, Frank Kimmel stretching out a five-car length lead on Mason Mingus through turns one and two. Kimmel's been getting great racing all afternoon long. Mason Mingus car length. As we see Tom Hessert now slowing Charlie off the pace a little bit in the middle of turn two. Field now making their way down the back straightaway as Kyle Weatherman makes his way past Brennan Poole to take over that third spot. Kyle Weatherman, that young man, is on the charge in the Andy Hillenberg Dodge here this afternoon. Now Kyle Weatherman starting to reel in the top two down the back straightaway. This young man started in that 22nd position all the way up to third. He finished fourth in his debut at Salem, about 10 car lengths in the 77 of Tommy Hester, the Salem winner, hits pit road. That team's going to change right side tires. Tough break for Tom Hester in that number 77. Apparently something not to his liking on that restart. Hester going to make a unsch an unscheduled green flag pit stop here. Now going down two laps down in that number 77 car. And the make is starting to reel in. Leader Frank Kimmel, two and a half. Two car links back on the back stretch. Mason Mingus running that high line in the middle of three and four, looking for the lead out of turn four. Mason Mingus was on the charge right before that caution flag came out. Picking up where he left off in that win run, number 32, Mason Mingus reeling in. Frank Kimmel down the back straightaway. Kimmel's going to be the first one to turn three. He goes all the way up to the ball. Mason Mingus right behind him. Half a car length back to the our finish line. Let's see if Mason Mingus can beat him in the turn one. Frank Kimmel, high wide hand. While Mason Mingus is reeling in, Frank Kimmel, the top two, have stretched out their advantage on Kyle Weatherman in third. Now opening up at half a straightaway advantage over the battle for that third spot as Tom Hester now making his way back out onto the racetrack. Tough break for the winner at Salem earlier in the season. Austin Wayne self looked to the inside of Mason Mitchell. He kept by him in the middle of turn two. But here comes Mason Mitchell pulling the cross river, moving down the back stretch. Austin Wayne self able to hold off that challenge in turn three. Mason Mitchell all over the back bumper of Austin Wayne Self in a battle for that final top five position. Mason Mitchell driving for the Rulo Brothers team as he has all season long. Uh, Rulo went to victory late last weekend, but unfortunately Mason wasn't the one driving the car. Yeah, unfortunately, that young man in his first road course start ran out of gas while running inside the top ten. And uh, I'm watching him under my radar. He was very good at Salem in the spring, all the way up to third and was starting 19th before being involved in an accident. Out of his own doing, Charlie. Had a chance to talk to Russ Rulo earlier in the afternoon. That team's very excited to have Chris Busher back behind the wheel at New Jersey in a couple of weeks. And uh, very excited at the progress that Mason Mitchell has been making. Of course, Mason does not have a lot of big stock car experience. Uh, still trying to bring him up to speed as we've got a battle for the lead over in turns one and two. Raiders hitting lap traffic. Frank Kimmel going by the outside of Thomas Raider. Now Mason Mingus three car lengths back going by Prater as well. They're trying to get around. As they pass the start finish line, Mason Mingus on the move here. Top two now weaving their way through traffic as uh, now the next car to go a lap down is going to be Tommy Hessert. Hessert already several laps off the pace. He's not going to want to lose another one here this afternoon. Again, Tom, one of those guys that is in contention for the championship, so every lap he makes here this afternoon is going to help that standing in the points, but he has a very torrid battle for the lead right off his back bumper. He's been able to fall away a little bit by about seven car lengths. Frank Kimmel, with new tires really paying dividends for the 77 of Tommy Hester. And Frank Kimmel, a little hiccup in turn two. Mason Mingus, about two and a half car lengths now as they head off the turn three. Kyle Weatherman now stretching out his advantage over Brennan Poole in fourth. And uh, we talked a little bit about Brennan Poole in that number 55 car. Brennan not really happy with his car here this afternoon. Kind of half-heartedly joking 
I bet he would like this race to get rained out today so they could go back to North Carolina and make some wholesale changes on that car. But uh, still not doing it too shabby here this afternoon up in that top five. Brennan Poole currently in the fourth spot, but is losing some ground to Kyle Weatherby. And as again, Mason Mingus all over the back bumper of Frank Kimmel down the back stretch. Mason Mingus using a lot of patience through this lap traffic. Now falling back to Kyle behind Frank Kimmel as he heads past Milka Duno. Mason Mingus going to follow suit. Heavy lap traffic ahead of Kyle Benjamin, Tommy Hester, and Cody Lane all ahead of the top two. The 15 car also in that mix, Kyle Benjamin will not want to be losing a lap to the leaders here this afternoon as uh, the Venturini team hoping for a couple of more cautions to get that car tuned back up and uh, repaired after banging off the turn one wall just a few laps ago. But uh, Kyle Benjamin now looking to the inside of Blake Hillard as we've got lap cars side by side right in front of the leaders. And Blake Hillard now Tommy Hester trying to get around Blake Hillard as well. But they have Roger Carter to deal with. Now Kimmel's looking to the outside of Tom Hester. Hester slams the door down. Roger Carter in turn three. Frank Kimmel definitely having to be patiently aggressive right now. Kimmel has to look for every advantage he can through traffic, but he cannot make a mistake as Mason Mingus all over the back bumper down the back stretch. Looked like Mingus had to check up ever so slightly coming out of turn two that time. That's going to give Kimmel a little bit of breathing room as he continues to deal with Tom Hazard in the 77 car. Tommy Hesser not wanting to give up another lap, but he doesn't fight. As now he goes to the bottom, and Mason Mingus all the way down now in turn three, all the way on the bottom of three track. Shoots up out of the middle of the track, still side by side with Tommy Hesser. Kimmel now using the lap traffic to his advantage. He has opened up about a 15 car length lead on Mason Mingus down the back straightaway. Mingus not having the experience of nine time champion Frank Kimmel. Kimmel using that traffic to his advantage. But I bet you Mason Mingus going to school on the master right now, picking up every tip he can on how to work traffic to his advantage next time around. And that's what this young man needs to do. He has a lot of late model experience. It's his first full season in the Arca Racing Series. What a better way to follow Rick Kimmel around Winchester, a five-time winner. Learn some tricks and use them at the end of the race. Frank Kimmel still following Kyle Benjamin in that number 15 car. Benjamin, of course, bouncing off the wall about 20 laps ago to bring out the third caution flag of the afternoon. That car does not look good, but it is still running very good here this afternoon. Benjamin able to keep Frank Kimmel at bay, even with a significant amount of damage to the right rear of that machine. Kimmel now using Benjamin to weave his way through some of this lap traffic. We've talked about the battle between old age and treachery versus youth and enthusiasm. And I think right now what Kyle Benjamin has going for him as he is now off the pace, I was just about to pay him a very big compliment. Kyle Benjamin really doesn't know what that car should feel like compared to somebody like Frank Kimmel. So as damaged as that car was, maybe not bothering Kyle Benjamin as much as it was somebody like Frank Kimmel, but unfortunately, there must be some sort of mechanical issue with that car because Kyle Benjamin does bring the 15 down pit road and the crew now looking under that right rear of the car as we have reached the halfway point here in the Hurst Chase to taste 200. 101 laps in the books. We have an official race here this afternoon. Should Mother Nature get grumpy with us again? Frank Kimmel is your leader, has led all 101 laps of the Hurst Chase to taste 200 to this point, but Mason Mingus not making it easy on him. No, he really isn't. This young man has fallen back through lap traffic. Once the two leaders, Frank Kimmel and Mingus, get past lap traffic, that's when Mingus has really rolled him in. He's open racetrack. Is, now he has it down to about three, four car lengths in turn three and four, but this young man using a lot of pace in all lap Frank Kimmel still having it his way up at the front. We're going to step away for a quick break. You're listening to live coverage of the Arca Racing Series right here at ArcaRacing.com.
Welcome ARCA fans. Ancel gloves are designed to fit you from the track to the home. The built-in grip makes even the most precise jobs easier. The world leader in protection, Ancel. Find Ancel gloves and many other high-performance products at Menards. Menards is proud to sponsor the ARCA Racing Series, and we're proud to be the home improvement center where you'll always save big money and find the best products at the lowest prices. Save big money at Menards. From the high banks of Daytona to the triple jumps in Anaheim, racers and engine builders alike have one goal in common, a trip to victory lane. That's why the pros use Klotz synthetic lubricants. For over 53 years, Klotz has dedicated itself to mastering the science of synthetic lubrication and why racers around the world rely on Klotz. Order by calling 800-242-0489 or online at klotzlube.com. Klotz synthetic lubricants, less drag, more power. At Menards, you'll find Scott brand products that will get the job done at a smart price. From the iconic yellow Scott rags in a box to the Scott 1000 bath tissue, Menards has the products you need. When you want a dependable, trusted, and quality product like Scott, there's only one place to go, Menards. Saving you big money on all of your household and home improvement needs. Save big money at Menards. Get into the world of high-performance motorsports at the University of Northwestern Ohio. The University of Northwestern Ohio invented the first high-performance motorsports education program in the world. Study with the best on state-of-the-art equipment and at the world's largest outdoor classroom, Lima Land Motorsports Park, a racetrack owned and operated by Northwestern. Our graduates are working on race teams and pit crews throughout the racing industry. Join the university that started it all, the University of Northwestern Ohio.